And what lake is this? This is Nowlands Green. I mean, Nowlands Lake. Nowlands Lake? Yeah. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay, so what we got here is Nowlands Lake. And if you can sort of see this, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if you can see the color on this or not, but I mean, this is green. This is, I mean, the streaks of this, yeah. just, it's, it's disgusting. I mean, it's, this is the shoreline, that's, I mean, but look at this lake. And this is a headwaters lake for the Mategan River, not the Tuscan. And from the air, it's, it's entirely green. I mean, you can't, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I mean, look at that. And then if you look at it from the air, it's, it's a green lake. It's the first thing to turn green in the spring and the last thing to freeze up in the winter. People say it's green all year, but it does freeze up, I guess. So, who's uh, in the Department of Agriculture in uh, Nova Scotia? Who Have you called anyone? Are they looking into this? <laughs> They've known about it since 1983. They'll deny that, of course, but I guess you've got the proof. Anyway. Oh yeah, this seagull feathers. I'm More not sure I want to pick seagulls. this up, but I would say this is some seagull bit the dust here. I'm not sure why, but we do seem to find a lot of dead seagulls. Speculation. Who's killing seagulls? So how many lakes on the Tusket are polluted? Basically every lake right to the ocean. It's any significant lake that the river flows through, that the core lakes, the, uh, the, the, the lakes that the river goes in one end, out the other. And there's forensic evidence and scientific as evidence that's pointing towards these mink farms that we're looking at? No doubt about it. Study done and that was released in 2009 shows that. Our can Minister of Agriculture would argue that there's no proof that pollution is caused by the mink farms. And that's his mantra. That's what he says every time you ask him about it. No scientific proof, he says. But again, he hasn't read his own Department of Environment's report. And maybe he doesn't want to look at it. Yeah, that's a seagull bit to dust. In the audit they did, this year is equal to a high school project. Yeah, the Department of Environment? No, Department of Agriculture and Audit. Yeah. It wasn't worth the paper was written on. No, there was out of out of 30, 6, 38 firms that they were supposed to assess, they missed one altogether. They said they went there and checked it out, but they had the wrong place. They they obviously did not go there. That was the Harvey Mood and Kemp. Supposed to be a mink farmer. He raises cattle only. He's never had a mink on his farm. They uh, they made up an assessment that wasn't much, and it said out of 38 of them, there were 29 of them that that the the effluent went into the woods. That was the expression they used over and over and over. Filtered through the woods, into the woods, filtered through a swamp. It was always filtered. Like if you put this in a wet spot, it goes away. <laughs> so. What's the name of the person that's in charge of the Department of Agriculture? John McDonnell. His name's John McDonnell? He's the minister, yeah. And he doesn't seem like he's aware of the he, he problem? Never, he admitted, he never read the audit, never saw the audit. He, and he's the, and he's in charge of the situation? Well, he's, the, he's the main man. But he doesn't care enough to, to read? I can't go uh, there. All uh, I know is he was told to be briefed on it before the meeting we have, a community meeting. We told his handlers that we were going to ask, talk about the audit, but the best we could figure out, he never looked at the audit, was never briefed on it. So an entire, I didn't want to remember. I didn't want to remember. an entire river system's polluted and uh, all the lakes involved with it and he doesn't seem to care at all is he, what you're saying? Well, you we can't say he doesn't care because he did get, he did take the initiative to write the uh, a law. The only thing is, he's in a conflict of interest. He should have had the Ministry of Environment do it. Yep, a law that was made by mink farmers for mink farmers, and really doesn't use the word pollution in it anyway. So, what's the name of the person that's in charge of the Ministry of Environment? Dalibu. 
Sterling Bellevue. And Bellevue, is he aware of the pollution of the Tusket? He appears <laughs> to be in hiding. We don't hear much from him. You don't. He's, he's, I've never seen him make a public appearance to anybody that's concerned about water quality. I think it would be an embarrassment to him if he did. So these guys don't appear to care too much. They don't perceive to care too much and uh, it's because the mink industry brings in a lot millions of dollars of money for the provincial coffers. So to them it's an industry they want to grow but they're only worrying up the front end they're not worrying about the back end of what's happening. So destroy southern Nova Scotia because they're earning a few bucks to sell mink to the Chinese and Russians. It helps balance the budget. Yeah. Load of revenue for the government. Yeah. Well, let's just look over this nasty little slime pit before we... Uh... So, you can kind of see over here the the ooze and slime that is This sort is of... a stream that comes into Nowlands Lake. And the... upstream from here there are quite a few mink farms that are using this as a nice convenient way to get rid of their problem. And this is not only uh, you can smell it too here. Oh yeah, you can smell it. There's dead seagulls on the roofs right across the street. There's a dead seagull right over there. You know, people are throwing their garbage all over here because no one cares because it's already destroyed. So, oh yeah, there's a mink pen. I guess you can't see it. So right in against that tree. Uh, I said a mink pen. That's incorrect. A mink live trap because it's summertime. That's, there's constantly traps here to pick up on the mink that escape. And they take them back to the mink branches if they get a... Jesus Ooh, Christmas. I just infected my, <laughs> my foot here. I'm trying to get... But anyways, I was trying to show you this. That's oozing right into this green lake, that green ooze from the mink, you know, affluent. It's, uh, it's really disgusting. This is going right into a Nova Scotian lake. This is... Shit, hold on. Would you call that cat nine plant taller than most? It looks really healthy. Looks really big. Matter of fact, they're all quite tall, and it's sort of it's uh, pretty well because it's a very rich water around it. It's it's highly fertilized, if you can use the word. And you find very often that grasses and plants just grow large. I'll bet you if you had blackberries here, they'd be big because you got you've got fertility that's un unsurpassed and mother nature never gets this rich all, all around you it looks like a bit of jungle growth and those are large cat nine tails for mid-july <laughs> everything's everything is green and in a sense gorgeous because it's it's a uh, all of the stuff on shore is, <laughs> the green it, in the water is not gorgeous except the for the green shore. ooze that's feeding it yeah it's well fertilized a bit like the jungle. Yep, a bit like the jungle.